tower, and I actually saw people waving where the first plane crashed through, and then it was unbelievable seeing this second jet come crashing into the second tower. It's, what is going on? And unfortunately, here in New York, many of our stations cannot see this, local stations, because the antennas are on the World Trade Center. They're backup towers on the Empire State Building. But communication, television communication in New York City is probably pretty much knocked off the air. I just want to say something. We're looking at a picture here where it appears, because of the angle, I think, that the towers are leaning. And, and I don't think that that is, is actually the case, because after the first impact, it looked as if it was the, the left hand, the right hand tower was leaning. And now somebody is saying, we're getting a witness saying they are leaning actually right now, which will give you an, an idea of the type of impact we're, we're talking about. And that perhaps they're buckling under the force mm -hmm. uh, of, of the collision and or the hole that's resulted from these two planes. We're going to go to George Shea right now, who has also witnessed both or one of these collisions. George, can you hear us? I can hear you. What did you see, George? Yeah, well, I was in a car driving up, just gotten out of the battery tunnel, driving north on West Street when an enormous explosion happened. And I think it was larger than a construction explosion. I looked out the window, and what appeared to be an enormous tire um, smashed into the ground, and I believe it hit the car to the right of me. And it was just so scary, and there was also a ton of debris fall. And um, I jumped out of the car, and I ran south away from the building because I thought it was, there would be further explosions. And, and have you seen anyone injured on the, on the ground, George? A man next to me was actually hit by a piece of debris in his arm. And they said that someone had been badly hurt um, in a car ahead of me. I'm not certain if it was the car next to me, and, and I can't verify that. All I can say is that a lot of debris was falling. It was very confusing because everybody, I think, immediately assumed that a bomb had exploded, and, and that sort of uh, pre, you know, had people thinking that further bombs may explode. So there was sort of a rush away. Did you see, George, the second plane, that jet? You know, Fly into this, any, the other twin I heard tower? two explosions, however. There was a first explosion that was louder, and then a second explosion. And um, but, he, but I did not, I could not see that. And I looked up, and when I looked up, I saw debris falling and the tire, as I said, a very large tire. Well, of course, this is, as we've said, completely shocking. Mm -hmm. Uh, video and a shocking turn of events, and we've been talking here that the first incident, one might surmise that it was some kind of accident, and then to have a second, what appeared to be 727 jet, of course, the question of terrorist activity has to surface, yeah. and, and, and the question of whether this was an intentional terrorist act of some kind. You know, keep in mind that there we're in an area here where there are three major airports. You have Newark Airport, Kennedy Airport, and LaGuardia Airport, all within several miles of the World Trade Center. You know, it's very unusual for a plane to get into this area without being completely tracked or identified by air traffic control. So you would have to imagine that, A, if this plane were headed right for the World Trade Center, there must have been someone trying to talk or communicate with that pilot. and and for it to fly right into the side of the building. Well, the, the, the smaller plane, you can understand almost, but a jumbo jet, a large jet, completely... Let's re-rack that video, if we could, down in the control room, where we actually saw the jet flying into the building, and which was And I was, was mistaken. And Elliot Walker said it was a big plane. I was looking in the distance and saw a yeah. small plane, which might have been a helicopter, actually, yeah. to see this plane come into the picture. There it is. That is a big plane. And... I mean, it's hard to imagine. It's a 737, we're now being told, and flying directly into the midsection of the, okay, what would be the eastern to tower okay. of the World Trade Center. I'm wondering if Jennifer Oberstein is still on the phone. Um, do we still have Jennifer on the phone? She's actually not on the phone because she was near a police officer. At mm -hmm. least we could have perhaps gotten more information from that officer. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, it's pandemonium, yeah. I am sure, down there. And we gathered that from even the eyewitnesses with whom we spoke and how terrifying this was for them to see. And you can only imagine as you get closer to the Twin Towers, a, a New York landmark, mm -hmm. landmark 
um, how the, what the scene must be like there. You know, you talked about the buildings looking like they're buckled. They're designed to, to have a two degree sway in either direction because of the height of the building and to be able to deal with wind and stress. But something like that is more than it's probably designed for. We, we want to go now out to Jane Daranowski, who I understand is a television producer here in New York. Jane, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm uh, down here near the World Trade Center. I was walking down 6th Avenue this morning at 8.42 a.m. A group of us saw a plane veer through the buildings. Then we saw a huge cloud of smoke, and then fire came out of one of the towers. Here, it's near the upper floor, as you can probably see with your chopper shots. And then about 10 minutes ago, a second explosion in the second tower. Lower down, uh, that was not affected by the plane, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. But right now, there's a huge gaping hole in one of the towers, and the other building is on fire. Uh, the scene down here is incredible. People are out, out of their office buildings, watching, crying, taking pictures. Uh, I've never seen anything like it down here. Jane, you said you saw the first plane. Could, did you get a, a glimpse of what kind of plane that was? We were told it was a small commuter plane. Well, it, it looked... It wasn't a Cessna or anything like that. It was a larger plane, a mid-sized plane, and we could hear it very low. And uh, walking down the street, a couple of us looked at each other, uh, thinking, what's happening? Then it veered drastically on its side through the buildings and then went into the upper floors of the uh, World Trade Center tower. And we want to just mention that when the impact hit the first tower, okay, you would hope that people who were in the second tower were beginning to evacuate, mm -hmm. especially if air traffic control had some indication that this was deliberate, you'd hope that they were starting to get people out of the other tower before this second plane hit that tower. But you, I mean, if you've tried to go up, you know, we've been upstairs in the world, in the towers, of the, you know, in the restaurant up there, to try to get down. I mean, the elevators would have been jammed, no yeah. question, but if there was an indication that this was deliberate in the first case, you'd hope that they yeah. would immediately begin evacuation in the second tower. We've got another eyewitness that we'd like to speak with. Dan Dietrich is on the phone. Dan, uh, tell me uh, where you are and what you're seeing or what you saw. Okay, what I saw was one plane coming in low from from the north down down over 7th Avenue. It crashed into the top or the middle of one of the towers. Ten minutes later, I saw another plane crash into the other side of the tower at a lower level. It looked to be a small, you know, commercial plane, the first plane that I saw. It crashed into the top of the tower and there was a huge fireball, and there was the gaping hole in the side of the tower. As we were waiting outside and looking at it, another plane came in low, I believe from the other side, and hit the sort of the, the middle of the other tower. Now, I, I saw both, both planes, two separate planes, crash into each tower. And Dan, and again, the size of the planes, um, tell me about that. I would say that the plane was a, a, a mid-size, looked to be a commercial airline. I, I, I don't know. I thought perhaps, you know, a commercial airline, a mid-size, not, you know, not a jumbo jet. This, of course, is unconfirmed, but we are getting information from an employee of United Airlines. And again, we want to emphasize this is unconfirmed, but there is speculation uh, that an American Airlines plane was hijacked and crashed purposely on purpose into the World Trade Center and that the second plane was another plane perhaps hijacked was then flown in to the second tower. Dan, tell me about people on the ground. Are you at a vantage point where you can see what's happening on the ground? I'm farther up in the West Village. I'm not on the ground near the base of the towers. Where were you when it actually happened? I was walking down 7th Avenue south at about Oh, Charles Street, which is about 15 or 20 blocks north of the towers. Well, obviously, this was a, a shocking thing for you to witness on this Tuesday morning, you know, where some wires just came out and said in 1945, an Army Air Corps B-25, a twin-engine bomber, crashed into the 79th floor of the Empire State Building. That occurred in dense fog. This was a crystal clear day in Manhattan. So it is completely unclear how there would be any kind of uh, problems with visibility. 
Dan, thank you so much for talking with us. Hopefully you can stay on the phone and we can check back in with you at another point in time. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. We want to also report that, that remind people that uh, the World Trade Center bombing that took place on February 26 back in 1993, the product of a terrorist attack, the result of a terrorist attack that killed six people and injured more than a thousand. Of course, that happened on a Friday afternoon. I think, Matt, you and Al were working that yeah, day. We were. I know I was at home in Virginia watching it in disbelief, and now it feels a bit like deja vu. But of course, this is so much more bizarre. Yeah, it, no question. And you keep in mind that that killed six people, injured a thousand, and the explosion happened in a garage in the basement. Mm -hmm. This was a direct hit on the midsection or upper section of the tower, so the potential for injuries and death much larger, of course, also some people on the planes. Yeah, That's right, exactly. The if they were hijacked and they were en route to a different destination, right. of course, this continues, this story continues to unfold. Bob Kerr joins us now. Bob, where are you and what can you tell us? Katie, good morning. I'm on the North Lawn at the White House, and the first thing we look for here in light of what's happened is whether there is any unusual activity out here, whether there's an unusual police or Secret Service presence, people on the roof, that sort of thing. We don't see that as we speak. Uh, I did try to call the National Security Office here. As you know, the president is out of town. He is in Florida. We're told he has been informed of this. Uh, I can tell you that the White House uh, National Security staff that remains here is in a senior level meeting, and uh, we are hoping to hear from them uh, as soon as possible. But Katie, the reaction here to the pictures you're seeing and to the initial pictures when they came up, even in what's called the lower press office here at the White House, was one of, of shock. I mean, people are just standing around uh, television monitors looking at this. And when I say people, I don't mean just the reporters. I mean the people who are actually in the office who work here at the White House. So very little information is coming out of the White House at this juncture. But needless to say, if the speculation is true about some kind of terrorist uh, event, this will be a major, major crisis for the Bush administration. Jim McLeshevsky is at the Pentagon now. Mick, are you hearing any more information from there? Well, according to U.S. intelligence officials, Katie, there appeared, at least to their knowledge, to be no specific threat involving hijacking airliners or uh, any attacks on buildings in the New York area. Uh, U.S. intelligence officials report this morning that there are, uh, you know, they constantly are hearing about threats, uh, possible terrorist threats uh, uh, against American targets worldwide. Uh, but as far as they know this morning, they had no early indications uh, that uh, anything of this nature could have occurred. Uh, Pentagon officials are already calling this a terrorist attack. Uh, they say that uh, they, they have not yet uh, ordered the uh, scrambling of any military jets. If National Guard were to be scrambled in that area, that would be at the order of the governor. Now, of course, the president does have the authority uh, to scramble uh, American military forces uh, in defense, but there's a problem here. Uh, what, what now do you fend, defend against exactly? Uh, uh, if you put uh, uh, war, war planes in the air, uh, there's always a danger that they could misidentify uh, a, a pilot's intention. Susan. Although I believe, uh, according to officials here, I just that wanted all to tell you guys if you want to continue, are now off limits and restricted. Uh, but uh, so far, the U.S. military uh, and Pentagon officials are scrambling to get as much information as they possibly can to determine what course of action, if any, the U.S. military would take. But, Mick, they are describing this as a terrorist attack right now. There are some officials here in the Pentagon who are calling this an obvious terrorist attack based on very preliminary information. The information that intelligence officials are getting in terms of uh, a possible hijacked plane, and, of course, the the very horrifying video right. of the plane veering into the tower itself uh, is a clear indication to everyone here that this is not an accident. All right, Jim Mikoshevsky, thanks. And of course, the coordination that took place to have two planes hit the towers within 18 minutes of one another. Let's go back to the White House now. Bob Kerr is still standing by there. Bob, what can you tell us? Well, Matt, it was interesting to listen to uh, Jim Mikloshevsky there from the Pentagon. Of course, the president has the authority to scramble military uh, forces. 
And uh, this is a case, obviously, in which uh, retaliation, if indeed it proves to be a terrorist incident, will be contemplated. But the usual course of events is it's an investigation. You know, unless someone steps forward, claims responsibility, the White House and other arms of the U.S. government will say, we have to determine who is responsible for this attack, try to pinpoint it, and then...